It's just rare that's a crime to have. Oh, okay. no, 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 no. you a rare guy. <laughs> I'm a rare guy. <laughs> you like the blood. Oh, man. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, as long as you're eating beef, yeah. I don't care. Yep, that's the truth. <laughs> and where we're at today is down on the Leggett Farm that's south of Seymour. And what's special about this family operation right now is that it's actually calving season. We've already got one load of hay. <laughs> that, that was funny. <laughs> Well guys, thanks for clicking your way back to the good old Southern IA. We do have a special little episode for you here today. Down visiting the cow-calf operation. And right now we're, uh, they're trying to feed. And well, they've done the feeding part. Just getting out of where they fed is a little bit of an issue right now. He must be going up the hill there to try and get another run, but if you guys are wondering if you can win a sticker in this video, you sure can. My favorite comment within the first 24 hours, and I'll send you a sticker. And don't forget, if you like seeing tractors in the mud, hit the thumbs up button. wagon must just have enough drag that won't let it pull it up that hill. As easy as he got up that side, people were saying he did that for the video. <laughs> <laughs> this keeps the silage cool inside. It's cool as a cucumber on the inside. Oh man, you that feel is. That. Yeah. It that keeps is. the quality really good. If this were outside, nothing against guys that put it on the outside, uh, yeah. but um, you don't have that rotten crust on the outside. No, that's. You gonna take a bite? And yeah. it's yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He talked about yeah. the last time I took take a bite it. of oats. I mean, you could literally eat these oats. Like you eat them in the water and stuff, but you can. <laughs> you can. Uh, Take a bite out hey, of it, Andrew. Andrew. I took a bite out of it last time. I mean, there's probably nothing wrong with that. <laughs> hey, 
How does it taste? Yeah, I got to spit in my face. The wind's going the right way. Hey, now's the fun part. You got to climb the bag. Take a run at it. That wasn't bad. I've got to get my knife out. And then he's what? <laughs> I kind of missed my mark there, but there we go. Well, where we're actually at today is down south of Seymour at the Liggett Farm. They run a cow-calf operation, and I'll get him to give you a little more information about that when he gets done feeding here, loading up to go feed. This is actually our second load of the day. It's good and sloppy out. There's a little bit of a breeze, but it's going to be a beautiful day. And what's special about this time of year right now is that it's actually calving season. They've just started up, and he's invited me down here to learn a little bit today. Don, how long have you been down here farming on this farm? Well, I started back on the farm in 2003. 2003. Yeah. And you got, it's a family farm because his dad's out here working with us today. His wife's out here. Your kids were out here. At one point, they must have yeah. gone back in the house. Right. And it's kind of all hands on deck this time of year, isn't it? It is. You, so how old were you when you got your first cow? Probably 10. 10? Yeah. FFA, 4-H deal? No. No, I didn't show cattle when I was younger, but I just family farm cow. It had horns and I really liked it. And it became yours? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of funny the way that they act. You know, this happens all the time and yet yeah. they act like they're never going to get it again it's right. like hey, the meal wagon ain't going to be here tomorrow we better all just push each other <laughs> they don't get as excited about the hay though. no come out here with hay they'll about follow me back out the gate after <laughs> silence That's what I was going to ask. Do you, are all your cows bred by bulls? Yeah. So if you're if these guys aren't like calving, they're obviously calving out here. How how will you figure out who belongs to who? The calves. Yeah. We don't always know that. You don't always. Some people tag their calves when they're born, but we're more on an open range. So uh, it's kind of harder to do it out here. So do you ever, do you hold any of these calves back then as like replacement heifers and stuff? Or do you just yes. buy all the replacements? We so. do. All of our heifers were born and raised here. Okay. So then another, so I've, from what I've watched, like they AI pigs a lot, they AI dairy cows a lot. And so well, why is AI not a deal with cow calf? It is, um, it is if you're wanting to get better genetics. Better genetics, but like. Uh, for the commercial cow guy, it might not be quite as important as other people, but we have AI a little bit in the past yeah. to get good calves. It's more an ease of operation than anything. We, well, the AI. Yeah, well, I could I can understand that because dairy cows they're in a confined building. Hogs are in a confined building. Mm -hmm. Literally, you can lock down the cow's head essentially, and yeah. AI them at any point. For you to AI, you've got to go 
we got to get them all in yeah synchronize them well you could do a few at a time yeah but it's just uh, in this situation where they're basically free range yeah it's just easier to put a bull out there and right they do just as good a job and our bulls are out of genetics you know yeah. it's not like we're not getting genetics no yeah because you, that's maybe that, not the latest and greatest but they're right up there with the latest and greatest so the only real advantage for ai and for you guys would be is if you like cedared them so can you cedar cows mm -hmm. you cedared the cows and then ai them because that'd make your cabin season significantly shorter or they it they would. drop because mm -hmm. how long you will you can you but, cows what you got like a month or so for cows to calf or how long well ours are strung out strung out a little bit you know. our really? younger ones calve on time okay. our older cows sometimes it takes mm -hmm. them a while a little bit what, what's the age range for your cows right now um we keep back heifers every year yeah. so we try to keep them under seven years old or seven hand. years old okay i was going to ask if uh well done cows come well done meat comes from older cows <laughs> <laughs> somebody but he don't know how good meat's cooked you know <laughs> Has, has there been any like big effects with this whole corona thing going on or is there what's yeah what's been happening well as the in the markets have hit to start with dropped big you time. know big time and then they've crept back up it's kind of been a roller coaster ride as far as that goes and i don't keep track of the markets just every day but that's what i've seen and, uh, really beef should be skyrocketing right now yeah that's kind of funny is like as as the you know drive or like people going to get all this food you, you would think that the price would be going up but that, for us that doesn't really see. trickle down to the farmer yeah the profit goes to the packers or yeah is that how that somebody is somebody else is getting the profit yeah. Yeah. but in terms of like disruptions in your supply or your day-to-day -day, there hasn't been anything yeah. we Farmers kind of quarantine themselves naturally, I guess you could say. Yeah. So, <laughs> I do think about who I'm around. Yeah. I try not to be around more people than what I have to. But yeah, it's we like, still have to work. Yep. Yeah, yeah, there's cows us, gotta eat. Yeah. Us farmers still have to keep things going because how would we eat if it weren't for farmers? Yeah. So then these are your replacement bulls or your yearlings. Yep. What do you look for when you go for a bull? What are your some of your like identifiers? I like to look and make sure they've got some depth and some weight on their back end. So when you say depth, what is what do you mean by depth? Deep. Like how, how big deep? rounds. Yeah. Well in their center section, deep. Oh, like wide, so okay, yeah. I gotcha. Then, then what else do you like to see? Some weight on their back end. Because oh, yeah. Angus, sometimes they're a little short. I mean, shy on their back end. Okay. So I want to get one with some, some weight back Wait. there. Is there a reason you go with black cows over any other cows right now? or is I go with black bulls because of cavities. Cavities. They're definitely the best for cavities. And when you calve out on the open range yeah. like what we do, it's way the way to go. So, but like, um, but is there a premium for black cows at market right now? Or is there? There is. There is? Yeah, if you show up in the ring with some black ones, most generally they'll outsell the ones, the other ones. And for particular reasons or just? I think it's for the love. Kind of the Angus beef that but you, you, been going on. Could you tell, like, if you put two steaks next to each other, could you tell? I can tell myself. I so. I like crossbred cattle, too, myself. But. Yeah, because you see a lot of baldies. A lot of people yeah. like to have baldies. Well, guys, Andrew and I are actually headed back up north here. The wind has actually picked up quite a bit. We're under a tornado warning, apparently, until uh, 9 o'clock tonight, but it's beautiful minus the wind out right now 
we had a great time down there you can definitely tell it's a family farming operation right there when we showed up uh, Delbert the father and then Don his son were get, going about and then his Don's wife and his kids were all out there on our TVs touring so you need to see that happening nowadays uh, learned a few things had a good conversation hopefully you guys enjoyed this little different style of video uh, if you would don't forget to hit that thumbs up button leave us a comment in the comment section below and like always we'll see you in the next one Ta -ta for now. Well guys, we're back up here in the shop and at the end of the videos I always put a little bit of bonus footage and this one's a little bit different. Uh, Don had just completed a, a, what are they, a Chummins? A Chummins? Yeah, a Chummins where he took his old Chevy from high school and put a Cummins in it. Pretty neat project. Something that I couldn't do. I don't have the skills to do something like that. But he takes us for a little bit of a rip and uh, he also tells us about it. Enjoy. So Andrew came with us today and the reason he came was not to see cows. He came to see Don's project here that uh, is a, what do you call it? Chum. A chummins. This is a chummins. So you, uh, what do you want to say about this thing? Well, this used to be my pickup in high school and uh, I sold it to a guy. They bought it and it had an engine fire. So they didn't fix it. Parked it out in the pasture in the fence row for 15 years. <laughs> so that's why the body's in such good shape on it. But it didn't have an engine and the transmission that was in it wasn't any good either. Transfer case, I mean the whole nine yards. I decided to, instead of putting a big block 454 back in it, I was gonna attempt to put a Cummins in it. Cause I'd watch these videos on <laughs> He's YouTube. been watching the YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And these guys acted like it was a piece of cake. Well, it's not. <laughs> Still smells a little bit like a combine on the inside. But... So where did the motor come out of? Uh, this came out of a second gen Dodge. Um, so it's mechanical. It's a 12 valve. And have you done anything to the engine? Um, I turned up the RPMs a little bit and maybe the smoke screw a little. <laughs> smoke screw had never been messed with, so it was stock. So it wasn't a high schooler's pickup? No, it was an old man's. <laughs> and I actually converted the transmission to accept the transfer case. It was a two-wheel drive to start with. <laughs> Had to put a three-inch body lift on this thing. That, that's that's yeah. what you were telling me. You did something with it. In yeah, order yeah. to get everything to work out. The dog mufflers decided to exit in front of the tire. Yeah, I added a little farmer fix there. <laughs> having some issues with that. Baylor wire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how fast will we go down the road? <laughs> I don't know. I've well, never it hit It'll go in front of the Probably, yeah. That's correct. You need to tell him how you took the cab off the Dodge. He told me, wasn't he flip yeah. it over or something? He no, flipped it. took the spears on the tractor and ran right through the glass and picked it up off there. After I unbolted everything and <laughs> cut everything that had to be. Hey, I'll make sure that Missouri border. 
Missouri, they just put the black topper down and then paved the roads. Iowa, they actually make roads. Missouri, Iowa. Missouri, Iowa. I don't get it, Missourians. I'll just take you for a quick little ride. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs>